Welcome to the Pool Nation podcast, where it's all pool talk. And we ain't talking about netting and jetting or splashing and dashing. We're talking about becoming a nation of pool pros. We talk about the latest products, trends, and training in the pool industry. Now let's welcome your host with over a decade of industry insider experience and still the reigning champion of Marco Polo, Edgar De Jesus, and his co-host, John J.J. Flawless, the fastest netter in the West, and Zach the Pool Boy Nicholas. Welcome, everyone, to the Pool Nation Live podcast with myself, your host, Edgar De Jesus, And yes, I am the reigning champion of Marco Polo, along with John J.J. Flawless, the fastest netter in the West, and the famous Zach, the pool boy, Nicholas. Today, we're answering the questions that the pool pros have sent in via poolnation.com. And I want to welcome everyone to our live podcast, the podcast where it's all pool talk. And we ain't talking about netting and jetting and splashing and dashing. We're talking about becoming a nation of pool pros. And yes, we will talk about the latest products, trends, and training in the pool industry. But before we get started today, I want to thank our sponsors for this podcast, the Ultimate Pool Tools, the SPPA, PoolInvoice.com, Blu-ray Excel, Aquastar Pool Products, and Pivot Pool Products. We want to thank them for their continued support. Mr. Zacharias, good morning. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm dragging a little bit. The baby decided last night was going to be one of those nights where uh, he just didn't want to sleep without being held. So at about 2 a.m., I just gave up and I sat up in bed and basically slept sitting up from 2 to 6 a.m. with him. So I'm pounding my coffee, trying to wake up. And then to add to it, Edgar sends me the notes for today at about midnight, and he knows I'm sleeping by then. So I, I know what he's up to, and he's trying to condition me so that I, I get better at doing these things off the cuff without the preparation. So I, I know what you're up to, Edgar. I'm watching you. To be honest with you, John, I did send it late last night. So as you guys know, I ran out. I was looking for our suit stuff that we're trying to do. I'm having a great time. We go out to dinner, we get back home really late, take shower, do all that. I'm ready to go to bed and I'm like, oh crap, I forgot about. So here I am at 11 o'clock at night with my laptop in bed, just trying to send it. And Zach, I sent it and I said, it's okay. This will be good practice for him to just wing it and throw it off the club. <laughs> See, I knew it. <laughs> Mr. Flawless, how you doing? I'm doing well for Zach. I'm trying to paint a picture for everybody. Zach likes to get this well in advance because he puts some serious thought <laughs> into weeks. this. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> if there's a question that's being asked, he'll write a paragraph or a story. He literally has like 50 volumes of questions and answers and feedback and thoughts and comments. And Whereas mine, w when we first started, Edgar used to send it out, right? And we would send back our notes and what we thought and what we did. And it would turn from a four-page document to like a 15-page document with Zach's comments. And then Edgar would always say, where are yours, John? Where are yours, so John? True. Where are yours, John? Where are yours? And I would never turn them in. I'd never have anything. I wouldn't even look at them until the day of, simply because I'm just better at, I just like to answer off the cuff. And it's just my style. But Zach is very methodical and very particular in, in making sure that he wants to say what he wants to say and land the right message because he puts a lot of thought into it. So I don't know if that means that Zach put so a lot more thought into the answers than I do. I don't know. But I do know that what Zach is saying right now is 100% true. And this is not a joke. He is truly irritated. He is. He's totally irritated. Yeah, that he didn't get prep on this. I could tell in the text that I got this morning. As a matter of fact, let me read it. Let me read it. This is what he <laughs> sends me, John. And Zach, right? So you know that Zach is very like calm. He doesn't push through a lot of waves. But when he sends you this morning and he goes, is podcast at nine? Just got the script. I have no time to get ready. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be. You know Look, he's irritating I'm not kidding. shit, dude. I believe I'm not it, kidding. dude. I believe that was, it. And I read that right as I got up, and so he, that was at six fifty eight that he sent that, John. And I got up and I read it, and I'm like, oh shit, he's pissed. He's like pissed, and I'm like, no. That's like spitting fire from Zach right there. I said, no, it's nine thirty, and he's like. 
Okay, perfect. I should be able to get something together by then. <laughs> Struggle's real. You should see me like talk to my neighbors. I'm like, hold on, let me take this question. I'm going to go get my notes together and I'll revisit this in 30 minutes. Oh my God. That was so funny. So I think that's the first time, John, the first time that I actually read something from Zach and went, I can tell he's pissed. I can tell he's upset. I can tell he's angry. He dropped the ball. What's funny about that too, let's take that even further. You say that about Zach, right? By saying that, you're automatically saying that it hasn't been the first time for me that you constantly get messages from me where I'm pissed off. We're two completely different beings, aren't we? Oh yeah, I've pissed John off many, many times. And I'm sure John has pissed me off many, many times. But to get Zach irritated... Or to get him a little feisty in the morning is quite the treat, I think. So Just m- mess with my preparation. Yeah, you just can't so. mess with this prep. Like, John, I can throw you curveballs. When I throw you a curveball, you thrive off of it. You're like, yeah. oh, yeah. You know, I don't like the routine. I don't like everything to be as smooth as that. Just throw me a curveball. Make it interesting. Let's play some ball. Correct. Where Zach is like, he's got to be like the pitcher. He's got to be out there two innings, throwing the ball, warming up before he gets out onto the mound, before they call him out. Yeah, that's why I think we're like yin and yang, right? It's like perfect. Oh, for sure. Completely, because when it's too structured, right, or when it's too laid out and all that, I get bored quickly, and it's just there's no excitement in it. But what's funny is I always say I don't like surprises. I really don't like surprises, but surprises when I say surprises, is more like when I'm not, like if all of a sudden you start asking me questions about the Galapagos Mountains and the rare species that are there, and that I'm supposed to give you an answer to that. That would irritate the shit out of me because I would have no idea what the hell you're talking about. And I'd have some fun. I wouldn't be able to elaborate. But like I said, it was a treat this morning to see the irritation in Zach. And I don't know if that's it's that sad that friends feel that way about friends. But I had to get into my morning. I had a very horrible morning this morning. And Zach, actually, thank you for making me feel a little bit better. I'll give you guys a little backstory before we go too deep into this. And this is I guess you can say it's a little embarrassing, but I don't really give a crap. And I'm going to, I'm going to say it anyways. I, yesterday we're out servicing the pool and I'm out with Fabian and we're doing training. We're doing that. And we had to drop a vac to vacuum manual vac a pool. So he pulled the hose out. He opened up the skimmer, got the basket out, did what he was doing. I'm walking around doing some other things. I'm not paying attention. And all of a sudden I walk by and I step into the skimmer. The first time I've ever done this and I'm full crocking all the way down and i got big feet right i'm size 13 14 and my foot doesn't fit in there so instead of going all the way down right something you had to bend and give and it sure did and my toe didn't feel too great afterwards and this morning i wake up and my toe is broken it's black and blue and swollen Uh. and bruised up yeah, black and blue, it's broken. Yeah, I'm a little irritated. Yeah, for sure. So mama kept saying, it's just sprained, it's just sprained. And I'm like, no, baby, I think this is, I think it's a little bit more than that. <laughs> I think it's a little bit more She's than like, that. like, you're whining, you're whining. Yeah, and then I'm like, okay, whatever. And I'm <laughs> chugging along, doing what I'm doing. And then this morning, I literally wake her up with my right foot next to her face, right? As she's laying down and I put my right foot up there and I go, morning, babe. And she wakes up and she looks, she's like, oh, shit, it is broken. <laughs> I'm like, yep. Um, Yeah. I've never, I look, I've broken two bones in my body, my big foot. And then at one time when I was younger, I dislocated my finger. One day I got hit with the ball and my pointer finger was pointing this way. And, but other than that, I've never broken an arm, never broken legs, any other bones in my body, but I broke a toe. Knock on wood. Just to let you know, John, and by the way, everybody that's listening live, good morning to everybody. We have people over here saying, we can all sign John's cast in Vegas. There you go. (laughs) Your boot. Your boot. Jeanette is saying, good morning. Sorry, broken toes are not fun. Big shout out to Todd. Big shout out to Mr. Howard Pringle. What's going on, man? And Maria from Ensenada, Daniel Bowden, Corey, big shout out to you out there. So, John, yeah, you, you already got people wanting to sign that cast. So that's pretty cool. Thanks, guys. Did you tell Janie that now you know what birth pain feels like after you broke that toe? Dude, I'm not look, this is her. <laughs> look. He's, Zach, he's probably going to her. Now I know what giving birth feels like. Like, you don't understand, mama. You don't understand this toe. <laughs> look, look, look. I'm not going to bullshit. I'm that guy. 
that I rarely get sick. And I can't remember. I mean, like every eight years, maybe I'll catch the flu or, or something like that. Throughout this whole, throughout the whole COVID thing, I never caught COVID, or at least I don't think I did because I showed no symptoms or I've never anything. I've always had a, just been really blessed with my immune system, but God forbid, if I really am sick or I have the sniffles or I'm cold or I have the flu, I am that guy that is laying on the couch screaming that nobody cares and I'm dying. Right? I'm dying. I need more blankets. I'm cold. You know, what the hell's wrong? And you know, I'm, I'm that guy for sure. And yesterday with my toe, I'm sitting here going, I'm like, damn, this son of a bitch hurts. You know what I mean? I'm like, it hurts when I'm walking. And I'm going, okay, okay. I can see him. It hurts, mama. It hurts. You don't understand the pain that I'm in. You know what she tells me? <laughs> She's like this. Oh, no, it's not broken. Because if it was, you would be in so much pain because it's just sprained. You would be in so much pain if it's broken. And your big toe, oh, my God, you'd be. And I'm like, really? I go, no, I think it's just, no, it's just sprained. And I go, okay. And this morning, it's broken. So I think it shows that, hey, I was being tough because I wasn't acting like it was broken yesterday. But now maybe mentally, because I know it's broken, it might change. He's going to be like limping really bad. Like he could barely walk. He's going to be going out. Like you don't understand. And then I can just imagine him like that. There's a TikTok where they played the little voice and the little thing goes, I'm just a baby. I'm just a baby. I could see <laughs> him just laying down and mama recording him going, I'm just a baby. <laughs> All I have to say is I'm glad Leslie's not listening right now because she would chime in on this. Oh, you're one of those oh, too, she's, Zach. Dude, she's already brought it up. What are you talking about? Yeah, I'm the same way. Like I rarely go down, but when I go down, everybody I'm, knows about it. Yeah, I'm needy. For sure. needy yeah. For and then sure. the funny thing is, is that whenever anyone here gets sick, I'm like, don't come near me, don't hug me, don't <laughs> kiss me, like go in your corner, stay over there. I don't, guys. When I'm sick and when I'm in pain, I totally man it up and I'm just like the yeah. man. And I yeah. just, like, just <laughs> well, but hopefully nobody I'm in my house doubt. listens to this podcast. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, hey, guys, what we want to do is we want to talk about the Pool Nation Awards. Voting closes tomorrow, believe it or not. So whoever listens to this podcast on Monday, voting will be closed. Super exciting. For those of you that are listening on here, what you're going to want to do is get out there and vote. Go to thepoolnationawards.com. Here's something that you have to do. You have to register in order to be able to vote. Once you register, there's going to be an email that is sent with to you with a verification. You have to verify your email address before you can actually vote. So make sure that you go over there, register to vote. And the awards are going to be held on November 16th in Las Vegas at the International Pool and Spa Patio Expo. And my friends, it's going to be get big, guys. The list continues to get bigger and bigger by the day. I'm super excited. John, I'm going out there next week to go take a look at the room and the setup and all that kind of stuff. Super excited about that. Yeah, guys, don't forget it is a gala event, which means suits and ties for the men and cocktail dresses for the women. So make sure you are dressed too impressed or you will not be allowed into the awards. We also want to take a second to thank all of our sponsors for the awards. This year, our platinum sponsor is Hasa. And our gold sponsors are Blu-ray XL, Heritage Pool Supply, Natural Chemistry, the SPPA, Leslie's Pool, Pro, Ultimate Pool Tools, and Aquastar Pool Products. And listen, everybody, we have a lot of people. So it's a suit and tie event. Those that want to wear tuxes, they can. Zach John, I am getting messages from... A lot of the guys out there, they're stepping it up that notch going, I'm tuxing it out, man. I'm tuxing it out. And let me tell you, some of the other people said, hey, it's difficult to travel with the tux. Totally get that. Totally get that. Here's one thing that I found out last night. So last night, John, what time was I calling you last night from the men's warehouse? Yeah. It was like eight or nine o'clock at night. And I'm kind of going through the very cool thing that they have, John and Zach, which I didn't tell you guys last night. You can walk in to any men's warehouse you can rent a tux. They'll measure you there. They'll tailor it and they actually ship it to the Las Vegas store. So you go into Vegas, you walk up, you pick it up. And then when you're done the next day, you take it back and you drop it off and you're done. You don't have to travel with it. You don't have to do any of that kind of stuff. That is pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. Actually, yeah. I might do that. What do they tell you when you do that? Don't they say something to you? What'd they tell me? They said something you said last night. You're going to love it. I guarantee it. You, what is it? You're going to love it. I guarantee, I guarantee it. it. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, I do have to tell you this. Gosh, back in my day, I wore a suit every single day. And so I walked into the men's warehouse and I'm sitting there and they got all these suits and they got all these fun suits and stuff like that. And so I'm asking the lady and I'm like, do you custom make shirts? And she's like, oh yeah, we custom make shirts about four weeks. And I'm like, I turned to Leanne and I go, I think I'm going to have to order a custom shirt. She's like, what do you need a custom shirt for? You never, and I'm looking up and they got all these funky colors and stuff. And I'm like, I think I miss wearing a suit every day. And that lasted all of about three minutes. As soon as I started getting measured for my thing, I'm like, you know what? I'm done. Yeah, let's not do this. But they got some, nowadays they have some awesome colors with the reds and the blues. And they had a a just crazy shirt. Anyways, but we were working on something that's going to be a surprise for the awards last night. So we have that part wrapped up. So just pay attention, everybody, because we're going to be rolling with that out there. Yep. And we want to make sure to give a big thank you to the International Pool Spa Patio Expo for hosting the awards. It's really awesome of them. And to attend the awards, you need to get tickets. And you can do this by going to poolnationawards.com. And there's a button that says get tickets for Pool Nation Awards. And you can click that and get your tickets there. Or on the same page at the top, there's a button that says free expo pass. And you can click that and it'll take you to the International Pool Spa Patio site where you can register and get a free expo pass to get on the floor. And as you're going through that registration, you'll reach a step where you can choose any of the events you want to attend and you just choose the Pool Nation Awards right through there. And keep in mind that the expo pass does come at a cost and it's $60 last year. So make sure that when you're going through the registration, you use the promo code pool nation in all caps, and you can get that expo pass for free. Absolutely. So get out there and register everyone. We're getting close to, I think we're down to 30 something days, guys. And John, you're going to get a barrage of stuff just flying your way. I just, I just put, I placed an order and you're just going to get bombarded the next like well, Every day now when we, come, when we come home, I see like a stack of boxes in front of And I've been asking for notes for like two weeks and Edgar keeps promising it to me. So you should see the text message you're going to get. <laughs> like, the morning of the show. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, man. You should see John, Zach. I go, John, here's the theme. Here's what we're going to be talking about. Here's this. Here's that. Blah, blah. He goes, okay, I promise to you that I'll have it to you a day before this year. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me, John? Are we freaking at this again? It was bad last year. Yeah. So he will do it the same. He will do the same thing that he did and prep his notes the day of at the event. I need something to do while I'm on the. I'm not actually going to be flying, so I'm going to be driving. So I'll just have Mama drive. I'll do it on the drive there, which will be a few days before. Beforehand. That's what you said last year on the plane and yeah. you did it in front of the podium in your suit I on did. the floor 10 minutes before. And then he goes, hey, Edgar, 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 can you update the script on the, con- you I'm like, like nope. nope, I'm, I'm not like, doing- it's too late now. I'm like, I am not going to sit there and change that word document. If you want to do it, you that do was it. Awesome. I love that. I was like, all right, I get it. I get it. That makes sense. <laughs> and let me tell you, that's the same ball we're rolling with this year. But this year, there's no confidence monitor. <laughs> Bullshit. Zach will f- I was waiting for Zach's lose, reaction. Did you see that? It. He's like, what? <laughs> he falls out of his chair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's not there anymore. And it doesn't give me very much confidence. So they should probably name it something else. Yeah. All right, guys, before we get started today, I want to thank Ken from Ultimate Pool Tools. He's created a limited edition Pool Nation poll. And we shared it on our Instagram live. By the way, you can pre-order that now. There's only 40 of them. So if you want to pre-order that poll, go to ultimatepooltools.com and it's right there. You can pre-order it. So go ahead and go there. It's pretty awesome. You'll be able to see pictures of it. We did had it on the, uh, not this Instagram live, the one from the week before. So go check that out on the Instagram page. You can see the polls. I'll be posting about it today. The other thing that I want to talk about, ladies and gentlemen, is that at the Pool Nation Awards and coming over to visit us is going to be Luke from the Splash Podcast all the way from Australia. He sent me a message. He is confirmed that he's going to be there. So he's going to be attending the awards. We're going to have him get up on stage and present an award. And so I wanted to run this by you and Zach, John. And that is that We have talked about doing a competition at our booth, and I think we should do it on Tuesday where we're going to have a podcast set up 
and what we should do is create a competition where people can come in and do the intro for the podcast. And the person that does the best intro, we give them a prize of one of the limited edition Pool Nation polls. What do you think? Hell yeah. Why not? That'd be fun. Hell yeah. And then I think what we should do is to make it fair, what we should do is have Luke there, right? And then Luke can decide who the winner is. That way nobody says, oh, you guys, we just, since he's a host of his podcast, we can have him run it. And then the winner will actually, will use them on one of our podcasts. We can actually use the clips, can't we? On the intro. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That'd be cool. The other thing that we should do is we should have, so whoever's going to go and do the competition and we'll play the music and then you will do the intro is what you should do is you should come up with a nickname for yourself for the intro. So Edgar's the champion of Marco Polo. John is the fastest netter in the West and Zach is the famous pool boy. So when you're reading the intro, you need to come up with your own unique name for yourself. I love it. But Luke might not show up if you don't start saying Australia correctly. And that's one thing we learned when <laughs> they're on the podcast. It's Australia. 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 All the way from Australia. So you know what? It's done. It's done. We're going to do it on the Tuesday. We will pick an hour. We'll create some posts and we will share them out there so that we can do that. So this week's shout out goes to Pull Assassin. Big shout out out to you out there, brother. Zach, John, I think it's time to jump into the podcast. What do you guys think? I'll hobble into it. I won't be able to jump today. <laughs> All right. Let's hobble into this podcast with John right here. I'm just a baby. Hello, guys. I am currently in a position where I need to increase the amount that I charge for the pool service to be profitable in the company. I consider that the best way to do this is by adding more value to the service. Besides checking chemicals, brushing walls, skimming surfaces, vacuuming the bottom, and all the things that involve an essential service, what can I offer to increase the value of my service? Thank you. John, I'm going to start with you. Great question, right? And we touched on this a little bit on the Instagram Live. And I want to look at the very first sentence of the question, and I think that kind of answers it for him. He goes, I'm currently in a position where I need to increase the amount that I charge for pool service. And the important words are to be profitable in the company. So how can I put this again? Before you start looking or reevaluating the services that you're providing for your clients, you need to dig down deep and understand your numbers and figure out why your company is not profitable. It's not, I don't personally think, and again, I don't know, and this is us assuming, but it's not that you're not profitable probably because you're not offering the, the correct amount of services, right? The things that you listed as far as checking chemicals, brushing walls, skimming surfaces, vacuuming the pool, those are standard services that are provided. So I'm assuming you're already doing those. And if you're already providing that service and your company is still not profitable, the problem is not adding on more services so you become more profitable. The problem is your prices and what you're charging. So you need to figure out what the minimum rate needs to be for each account and then start raising those prices accordingly. And then more importantly, every new account that you start picking up, you hit that target number. So you obviously know that you're not being as profitable as you should be and that you need to make more profit. So you've got to, you've got to translate that into a dollar amount, into a monthly service amount. And whatever that amount is, you need to stick to it and stick to your gun. So I think w well before you get to the point of adding on more trick, more shows or adding on more tricks to your services, you need to figure out, hey, look, just for the baseline is probably well below market value. And even if it is near market value, then market value is way lower than it should be, if that makes any sense. So you just got to understand your numbers better. You have to figure out a dollar amount that you need to be at and you need to raise accordingly. And once you do that, then you can start looking at additional services to offer because now you want to become better than the rest out there. And now you want to give added value. So you want to charge a premium for the services 
that you're providing. Whereas now we're just trying to get afloat. So hopefully that kind of answers the question. And it's and it's a difficult question to re- really pinpoint to an exact answer, but hopefully that'll get you to where you need to go. What do you think, Zach? No, I agree a hundred percent. And you know, I didn't even think of that perspective on it, but you add more work, you add more costs. So then you're forever chasing that profitability. And one thing that people don't think about is on the flip side of the rate is the expenses that you're paying. And I think everyone needs to take a hard look at what their costs are and are there opportunities to trim costs, whether that's negotiating prices, negotiating cellular accounts. To give you an example, we use payroll processing and we have a fee attached to that. I simply went on the chat the other day and said, hey, is there any way for us to get this expense down? And within two minutes, they got back to me and said, yeah, we're going to give you a 25% discount on this moving forward. And I think it I equated to like $1,700 a year in savings. So you got to be proactive about keeping those expenses down. And I think when we're first starting out or we're growing a business, we take on a lot of unnecessary expenses. We try to justify that in our head that like, oh, we need this social media hoot suite management thing for a hundred bucks a month. And it's like, well, maybe we don't really need that. Definitely look at both sides of it. And another thing I want to talk about is that I think a lot of us automatically default to what additional work we can do. And that was, I was guilty of that too. I was always like, what service can I add? What can I do more? I think you mentioned it in the live, John, about like blowing off the deck or hosing down the deck or things like that. And adding value isn't just about doing more physical work as far as like the service is concerned. There are a lot of low hanging fruit that we need to capitalize on first. And things to look at are like your image, right? Do you have professional uniforms? Do you have professionally branded vehicles? How do you communicate with your customers when you're talking to them through an email or through a text or you're having a conversation in person? When they call your phone, do you have that automatic robot that's like, the user you have reached is not available, leave a message? Or do you have something that's like warm and welcoming and professional? And cleanliness of your vehicle is a huge one for me. Whenever I hire a contractor, whether they're doing work at the business or they're doing work personally at my house, I am looking at like when they open their door, is there pure chaos in there? Is there stuff falling out of their van? Are they organized? Because I'm automatically going to associate that with some sort of value, right? If they're messy and sloppy, I'm going to be like, oh, this is probably going to be cheaper quality work or things like that. And that's not always the case, but that's just the perception. And then last thing I'll touch on this is good a good web presence. Like I'm a firm believer in having a good web presence. It has been a very important thing for us. It has helped us grow. So you need to put a big effort into your website. And a lot of people miss this opportunity. They throw together something nice, simple, it's clean, but it's just not doing the job. So put into your website. And that's just... Those are a few quick examples that I think if people put time and effort into that would immediately increase their value without adding a bunch of extra work. And those are foundational things, right? Those are things that once you solidify that foundation, then you can grow a lot faster on a solid foundation. I'm going to tell my thoughts here in just a second, but I think we need to send to Zach the script a lot more just the morning of. Was that badass or what? That's what I'm saying. It was good. Because now we're just having a conversation and it's not so scripted as far as like, oh, I'm going to say this or this, 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 and that. Not that he doesn't, he puts a lot of thought into it, but sometimes you might overthink it. I think right now that was like, perfect. You nailed it. You absolutely nailed it. Just to let you know, I have a new feature where if if somebody's saying something, I can click it and it marks the podcast for me so I could go back to that place specifically and pull that. Just in that conversation, I hit the marker four times. (laughs) I'm like, oh, I'm going to use that clip. Oh, I'm going to use that clip. Oh, so just wait till we put that out. So over here, you have Michael over here. First thing, I'll come back to it. But Janie's saying, no way. That's awesome about the podcast competition. The other thing is Michael saying, dang, I'm not flying out there until Tuesday evening. And then Michael saying, Zach nailed that one on the head. And that really was a lot of gold, Zach. I'm going to go a little bit. And basically, I'm probably going to repeat some of the stuff that you said. So I won't do too much of it because it was just all gold. But the biggest thing that you have to figure out before you get there is just like John and Zach have said, is you have to figure out the cost of your service. 
you have to figure out what it costs for you to do the service so that you know what amount of money you need to charge and then what profitability you want to get to because it's very easy. So if you're only 10% profitable and you want to be 25% profitable, once you figure out what your cost is, you'll know exactly how much you need to raise your rates in order to get to that point. But anyways, I'm not going to dive too deeper into that because I really don't have much more to offer for that one. Zach, John, let's do this. Let's take a quick quick word from our sponsors. John, you can hobble over to get your five-hour energy and come back, (laughs) and we'll be back in a couple minutes. The Hyper Pole from Ultimate Pool Tools is a pool care pole designed by pool professionals for pool professionals, featuring precision-crafted carbon fiber and stainless steel construction. Go to ultimatepooltools.com or Instagram at ultimatepooltools. Pool pros have specific needs when it comes to general liability insurance. The SPPA program has you covered. With three tailored and customizable general liability options, SPPA makes it easy for pool pros to feel secure. Find out more and get covered at the SPPA.com. Now available, Pool Invoice. Pool Invoice is a pool billing software created specifically for the pool service and repair industry. It's developed for our industry and only our industry. Pool Invoice is built with reoccurring billing in mind. You can print, email, text invoices, or even send via WhatsApp. You can add reoccurring or yearly charges, accept credits, and set up auto pay. You can even see when customers have seen the invoice. It even has a customer portal where they can log in and see, print, and pay invoices. It has all your customers' information on one page, so you don't need to search through hundreds of invoices looking for the one you need. Just go to the customer profile and it's all at your fingertips. Created specifically for the pool industry, Pool Invoice. Now available at PoolInvoice.com. Blu-ray XL is the power of minerals working for you. Reduce your overall chemical costs and labor up to 50% guaranteed. Whether you have 20 accounts or 20,000, Blu-ray XL's direct pricing and free shipping to the pool trade have you covered. Improving pool professionals' profit and work-life balance is what they do. Blu-ray XL, the real mineral purifier. Visit them at BluRayXL.com. Blu-ray all day. Aquastar's new pipeline cartridge filters, available in two sizes, deliver top-notch hydraulic efficiency along with best-in-class filtration performance, approaching that of DE filters. Uniquely designed, open pleat spacing means 100% of the media square footage is usable. And these claims are backed by NSF test results. Designed with the pros' time and comfort in mind, the patented double-locking system improves safety and ease of access, making filter cleaners faster than ever before. Available now. Ask your supplier for pipeline filters today. Pivot how you clean pools. Debris that makes it to the bottom always enters from the surface. Clean from the top with Ariel, a smart solar-powered pool skimming robot. She works around the clock skimming pesky and fine debris off the pool surface. Tell your customers about Ariel and earn big commission on every sale. With advanced solutions like Ariel, you'll spend less time with the pools you service, improve customer relations, and increase your bottom line. Plus, pool owners will enjoy a constantly swim-ready and healthy pool and lower energy bills. Visit pivotpoolproducts.com slash dealers to see how much you can earn and for resources on how to get your customers to ditch the net for good. Welcome back, everybody, to the Pool Nation Live podcast. We're talking to John. We're talking to Zach. Zach, you did that on purpose, right? You turned off that camera. You waited right till the last second, and then you clicked on right as the commercial was coming to an end, right? Yeah, I have to stress you out a little bit. Okay. So I was actually waiting for you not to jump on because then I was going to make fun of both of you guys because both of you were (laughs) not on there. And then I saw your screen that just went active and then the camera came on and I'm like, (laughs) dang, I was going to make fun of both of them. We know that John's a little bit slower today and he's got a perfect excuse. So we're totally, I'm not going to make fun of you that you were late because I I know that you got a broken toe and it takes you a little bit longer to get there. I was going to make fun of Zach, but he was sitting there messing with my emotions. He was like, I'm going to get really, really excited. And then 
boom, I'm going to just yank the happiness away from him. Anyways, you okay, John? What's your pain level over there? One to 10. Man, it hurts. It hurts. I'm a solid eight right now. Is it a 12? Yeah, it's 45. <laughs> it hurts. It's 45? It is literally throbbing. It's like... Boom, 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 oh, boom, boom, there's nothing more And than it's that. so swollen. It feels like the skin is just going to crack open. It it hurts. Uh-huh. Yeah, it hurts. Yeah. Hey, Janie, I know that you're listening over here. Can you tell us on the Insta chat, and please don't do this to make your man seem like he's the strong man of the house, but tell us, you know what, just type a number from one to 10, 10 being the most, tell us how big of a baby he's being with this toe. So from one to 10, so 10 being the highest that he's being the biggest baby, put a note in there. And by the way, Janie, don't do the cupcaking thing and put, oh, it's a one because we know that that's not the case. So anyways, Zach, you doing okay? I'm good. Just working on some of my notes. (laughs) (laughs) John, I was going to say... Yeah, I was going to say, he nailed that one so much, and we gave him such accolades that now he's sitting there going, I got to up my next one. No wonder his camera was off. I only had one ready, so that was it. (laughs) All right, guys, let's continue this podcast because we got some great questions sent in there. Michael, over here, first response, you're going to have to up your game, and you're actually going to have to come up sooner so that you can get into that competition. I'm late with the commenting. I recently found out that I was paying for more insurance that we actually needed. It's fixed now. Here's the thing, and I'll tell you what we used to do, John, what they used to make us do. I'm sure you guys probably had to do the same thing at your retail company, but we had a list of things that we had to go back and we had to shop every year. It was just an automatic. So there was an exercise, especially when it came to budget time, And in hotels, believe it or not, we would start our budgets for the next year in June, right? Because they need to be finished up by October. They have to be presented to ownership. Ownership has to – it would go to corporate. Corporate would look at it. Changes would be made. And then we actually had to sit with the ownership group. And an exercise of that was that there was certain things that you had to go and shop out every year. And when I was working in housekeeping, which was the biggest expense of any hotel – I had a big list of stuff that I had to go back and negotiate. And then there was things that were done every three years. So an example, if we had a deal with the coffee provider for the coffee in rooms, we needed to go back and look at that and make sure that they were still being competitive with everybody else. And it was the same thing with the linens and all that kind of stuff. And I think that's a really good exercise for small businesses to start to get used to and doing at the beginning when you're small, because it's like Zach always says, And you always say those habits that you form at that early stage are the things that you're going to use when your company is a lot bigger. And when your company is a lot bigger, those are the things that you really need to constantly be doing in order to definitely be successful. No, uh, perfect. And to put it in a little bit more perspective, and we see it every day, especially the guys and gals out there that service commercial properties or commercial like HO that service HOAs or work for the city, what do they do every single year? Or when they're calling in for quotes, they're obviously looking for reputable quality companies, but more importantly, they take multiple quotes from multiple people and then they send it out and then they reevaluate it. And even if you land the job, you have that contract for a year. At the end of the year, it goes back up to the board and then they get new quotes again. And then they go from there and they figure out what's the best provider or best bang for our buck. And then they reevaluate. And then some, that's one of the reasons why we don't really dabble too much into commercial because I don't like to play that game, but you have to take that into consideration when you're a small business. And that's a point that I haven't even really even thought of. And it's true. You have to go back and look at it and say, Hey, look, if you're 10% on a thousand dollars might not be as big as at first, you might think that's an extra hundred bucks or whatever, not that big of a deal. But now if you're thinking about a 10% loss and now you're starting making 10, $20,000, right? Those things start to make a big difference. And if you can reevaluate just like what Zach said about calling up and about payroll fees and getting a 25% deduction, that's awesome. Another example is you can call up your credit card processing company too. If you use QuickBooks, use whoever you might use, and you can call them up and say, hey, you know, based off my volume, they'll also give you discounts too. And it doesn't hurt to ask. It's just smart business to do it. 
And same thing when it comes down to your distributors and your pricing that you get. As you grow and as you do more, you tend to get more based off of volume. And if you're not doing that, you're missing out on low hanging fruit that a simple phone call could fix and you can turn around and save yourself hundreds, if not thousands of dollars a year in extra fees that you shouldn't be, that you don't have to be paying simply because companies don't, they're not going to automatically say, oh, all of a sudden, hey, we're going to give you a discount. Oh, you qualify now for this discount. We're going to hook you up for it. No, bullshit. They're not going to do that. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. It work that way. They're going to ride that as long as they can. Yep. For sure. The best is I was like, look at personal stuff anymore. Like it's, in today's world, it's tough. And like, I go through our bank account and I'm like, Paramount, Paramount Plus, Prime, Netflix, Discovery. At the time, you're like, oh, it's $7.99 a month. But then when you have 27 things at $7.99 a month, it adds up. And with our businesses, I guarantee if everyone just stops and goes through their bank statements and starts looking, you will find things that maybe you signed up for recurring or whatever, and you have an opportunity to clean a lot of that up. Absolutely. What's that commercial say? What the, the Geico commercial? What is it? 10, 15 minutes can save you up to whatever amount of percentage. But it's the truth. It's like you don't spend that you don't spend that time and you don't ask and you don't get. A lot of people are gonna wanna wanna keep you. It's just like when you go to John, when you go to cut your cable bill, you're gonna go with somebody else. Then they send you to that representative that goes, Oh, we're gonna give you this discount and we're gonna give you that discount and we're gonna there's there's always that customer retention. So get out there at least once a year and shop. For sure. And insurance is huge too. And I'm glad we brought up Geico. Liberty Mutual makes a mint off of us. We have like six vehicles that we have insured, homeowners insurance, right? We have umbrella insurance. We have all, we just got another vehicle. We're going to be adding to it. All those things add up, right? And when you're spending a lot of money and the way it usually works is at first, these insurance companies will catch you and they'll get you at a good deal. And then every year you see your premium goes up and up and up and up and up. It doesn't hurt to shop around and you might, if you're spending a thousand, two thousand dollars on insurance a month, saving 25% on your insurance is quite the big deal, right? 250 to 500 bucks is, and as long as you don't sacrifice, obviously on coverage that you need or minimums, but you can play that game, right? And that money you save. So just be, don't be cheap, but be frugal. And it's a business that you're running and you need to treat it as such. You work hard for the money, for the money that you earn. And you have a family and things that are important they need to provide for. And you have people, if you have people that are working for you, that depend on you. So how healthy that business is financially is in the best sake for you, your family, and the people that are affected by it. Yeah, don't be dumb with your money. The other thing with insurance is if you ask for that to pay six months at a time, there's a huge discount. So I renew mine every six months, and it's like $450 in savings for each payment that you make, if you make that six month payment. So ask them, you for know, sure. Hey, can you just ask, be like, Hey, if I pay the six months to term in advance, what's my discount. And to me now I can't pay it month to month. Cause it's huge. Especially when you start to have kids that are driving, <laughs> it's that get, it doubles your insurance. So you, you got to get out there and ask. Yeah, And then when you first start and signed up for it, you probably maybe didn't have discounts or you didn't qualify for discounts or they weren't available. And they're not going to say all of a sudden, now you have these discounts and they're going to apply them to your account. You can go back and reevaluate and they'll go, okay, they'll ask you questions. Maybe you qualify for a lot of discounts that you don't know. And it's, you'll be surprised at how much money you can save and put that in the bank. Absolutely. All right, gentlemen, big shout out over here to Mr. Brian Curson. He said, hey, just got back from my 10K run. What did I miss? Can you guys start over? John, just to let you know, I told him, I said, you're lucky we started late because John's broken toe. <laughs> 10K run? Really, Brian? Really? <laughs> And he said, I said, John, you're lucky we just, we started late because John's a broken toe. It took him longer to get to the desk. And he said, Hey, I had a donut without sprinkles on top. I'm cutting back a little bit. I'm doing better. <laughs> so let's see here. First response. I have an insurance guy who checks discounts for me every few months. Absolutely. That's the way that you should get out there and do that. I'd even take it a little bit further. Hold on on that. If you have an insurance guy, and I don't know, this could be wrong or right, but look, that insurance guy is the middleman. That insurance guy is making money. So he's making money somewhere. So if the insurance company is offering this 
and then you're paying, and then you have a middleman involved working for you. Where is he getting compensated from? Is he getting compensated from that? from your policy or is he just getting great deals on or has a pre-negotiated rate with that insurance company? So you might be surprised to find that if you go directly to the insurance company that you might save yourself a lot of money, not trying to take money off of hardworking people's table, but you also have to take that into consideration too. Are you paying a premium? Because that's why it's weird. We go to, we went to State Farm and we have a family member that owns a branch and is a broker and we went to State Farm and trying to get insurance through them. And it was literally like five or $6,000 more per month. And that was the friends and family discount. And I'm like, it doesn't make sense to me. When then you go to another company and get on the reason why is, I mean, they're a broker, right? They're not direct and they, but they provide services that are valuable and they go rate shop. They'll do this. You can call them up. You can do that. So you just have to re- reevaluate whether or not that's important to you to have somebody to do that for you. Or is it something that you can do yourself? We've talked a lot about insurance. Let's stop talking about insurance. What do you think? (laughs) All right, guys. Hello, guys. When you're trying to get new pools in an area and expand your business in a specific place, would you guys recommend providing the service for less money just to get that customer in the route? Or is it important to maintain the same amount that your company charges? No. No. It goes back to the first question we talked about. And my answer there was we have to establish a minimum rate, right? There's a minimum, there's a minimum cost to servicing a pool. And once you understand those numbers, then you base your prices according to that. So if there's a funding gate or a bare minimum for your service and whatever that minimum rate is, whether it's 200, 300, 150, 225, five, whatever it may be, that you've come up with that you need to bring home for every account service, you never go below that minimum. Otherwise, you're not being profitable or you're not making money. And it's not, well, what's the point of doing it, right? You're not a charity. We're out to, we're out to provide a service and we're a business and we need to make money. Plus, I personally believe it devalues your service. You shouldn't negotiate with it. And then the other on the third part of it too is if you're already in a neighborhood and you already have clients that you've been servicing and taking care of and you're charging them accordingly, people talk and neighbors talk and you've been doing Bill and Pam's pool for the last year and you've been charging them $200 a month and now the neighbor is asking and you go over there and that neighbor's pool is just as big or maybe even a little bit smaller and or whatever, but you want to get there because you want to now establish a route there and you want to charge them $180. Once Bill and Pam find out, they're going to be a little irritated about that and trying to figure out, well, hey, help me understand why they're charging, you're charging them less than you're charging. If anything, you should be charging a little bit more than where that person is at. That's how we do it, at least. So you come up with your bare minimum and what that price is, and you price it accordingly. And then be upfront and very upfront and transparent with the client. Say, hey, look, yeah, we do service here. We do service there. And our rates have, we have a minimum rate. And this is what our rate is. And from there, it's based off of gallons of pool, usage, bather load, type of equipment, condition of equipment, frequency of service, how many chems are going to be needed. There's so many other things that are so many other variables that we price, but this is our minimum. If it's 200, it's 200. And then we go up accordingly. So they have an understanding of why. And it doesn't, it shouldn't matter of whether or not they have a 5,000 gallon pool or, or a 15,000 gallon pool. Your minimum is your minimum. So whatever the minimum you need to charge in order to walk into a backyard is, and that's taken into consideration all your costs, right? Costs from as far as uniform, gas, license, registration, workers comp, if you have it, general liability insurance, if you have a retail location, if you have a warehouse where you store things, if you have a storage place, all that oil changes, tires, all that needs to be considered and then broken down and then divided by how many accounts that you have, right? And you come up with a little dollar amount and that dollar amount is what it is. And then on top of it, you need to also take into consideration how much you're going to charge to service the pool as far as labor. And I know we're veering off a little bit here, but this is really important is the biggest downfall, or I think the common mistake that a lot of one pullers do when they price out pools is they don't take into consideration the rate that they're going to pay themselves to service that pool. So an easy way to fix that is, hey, look, you might look into a pool in the backyard. Okay, I might be going there four times a month, right? And let's say all my expenses and my 
costs are my overheads like five dollars a stop or seven dollars a stop or whatever and then my chems for this pool might be like another four bucks or five bucks when i'm at looking at eleven dollars or twelve dollars you know, okay great and if i'm gonna be charging them twenty five dollars a stop oh great i'm making 14 bucks per stop that's good no you're not because you have to take into consideration what it would cost to, to hire somebody to service that pool and if you're going to pay somebody ten dollars twelve dollars fifteen dollars to service per stop and you're at eleven dollars in expense and you're thinking you're making fourteen dollars in profit now you add another twelve dollars that you're paying somebody to go there right now we're, what are we looking at you're looking at one two three bucks in profit that you're making in reality you have to consider yourself and what it costs to service the pool. And then if you do that, then you'll be in a completely different position and you set yourself up for success, right? So you're not like the gentleman or on the first question where he says, hey, look, I'm not profitable. There's a good chance that might be the reason why. So do not devalue yourself. Long story short, do not lower your prices or give discounts. It only cheapens your service and make sure you understand what the cost is or the, what the funding gate is for you to go there and service the pool. Yeah. And I'm going to tag on that. And there is a strategy in this, but I think it's better suited for those extremely large companies that are, they have operational controls in place. They know what they're doing. They have $40 million in their back pocket for market expansion. And they go into a market at very low margins or a loss leader. And even at that, I don't like the idea of it, but that is a tactic and a strategy for some organizations out there. So it really depends on your goals. I think at the level that most of our, us are at, it just it doesn't make sense. And in my opinion, your rate is your rate. You have, like John said, like there is a cost to provide that service. And if you go below that cost, you are losing money. You are on your way to bankruptcy. And it just it doesn't make sense. The other thing is that it eliminates people that are going to constantly beat you up on price. And if you open the door to negotiations, the first interaction you have with them, you're setting the expectation that everything is negotiable. So when you go to do that pump or you go to increase rates two years later because of all the inflation and costs have gone up, they're going to sit there and they're going to try to negotiate with you. And that's the type of person that you're going to have to deal with and all the headaches that come along with this. And I talk to a lot of people and they have this idea of growing big volume of accounts, right? And, and then selling. I don't know how many people I've talked to that they're going to grow retail stores and then they're going to have Leslie's buy them out or whatever. So they do it at with low margins. And if you do that and you build a business that's not very profitable, I don't care how big it is. It's not going to be worth as much as you think it's going to be worth. And I've been approached several times by people who are looking to sell their route of 150 or 250 pools. And the first thing I want to know is their numbers. And whenever we get into that conversation, I start doing some digging. It just doesn't make sense. It would be a very bad move for us. So we'll pass. And I imagine whoever else they're approaching for that is going to pass as well. So for us personally at the Pool Boys, we're trying to build a brand. And we're trying to build it in a way that it's valuable. And we can't do that by making our service very low margin or a loss leader. And we're going to grow slower, but we're going to grow stable. So that's my take on it. And when you're starting a business, the, the wrong mindset that you can have is, if I go low, everybody's going to join me. And so if I offer John $80, John's going to go, oh, I have to be, I have to take Edgar's service. And the problem is, that's not the way it works because John's not looking for $80 pool service. John is looking to pay somebody $200 a month where he doesn't have to worry about his pool whatsoever. And he knows that he's got the ultimate professional in his backyard doing his pool. What you're going to attract is that person that is low budget, low budget minded. And then what's going to happen is when it comes time for you to replace a motor or replace something, you are now dealing with that exact same mindset, just like Zach was saying. So you're going to have that person that's going to try to nickel and dime you and you're going to be frustrated. Number two, and coming back to this, Zach, and that was perfect what you were saying, is very large companies that have a lot of financial backing it can be a strategy to come in at a lower price in order to take over the market and then all of a sudden raise their prices. That's somebody that has millions and millions of dollars in backing and financial backing that, that that's a strategy. 
when you're in the pool business, it's probably not the smartest strategy to get into because it's directly affecting you, your profitability and the money that you're taking to your pocket. And you don't have somebody behind you saying, hey, I have $10 million backing you up. Let's just get a thousand accounts and then we'll sell them. So everything's about strategy. And I talked about it, but one of the worst things that you could do as a new business is start with that discount mentality because that's when you need every dollar that's coming in in order to be able to grow that business, right? And to be able to hire the people and be able to take that business to the next level. So if you start with that mentality, you're starting off on the wrong foot because you're making less profit just to start your business when your business is going to consume the most amount of money because when you're growing, your profitability goes down because a lot of those growing expenses are there. Don't get into that mindset of just because I want to get in somewhere, I'm going to go in with that lower rate because it's really going to affect that profitability that you have. And this is not just to the pool industry. I can go back. I remember Priceline coming into the market in hotels, right? And you know the strategy of Priceline, right? They would go to the hotels and they would say, hey, give us the extra rooms that you have that nobody's selling and give them to us for like 40 bucks and we'll sell that room, right? And people are going, oh my God, yes, I'm going to give you all of those empty rooms that I have at $40 and then you can resell them. Well, Priceline, what they would do is they would go in, they would stick them in at 60 bucks, they would make 20 bucks and boom. But then what ended up happening is people got very smart and they figured out Priceline and they figured out what kind of hotel they could stay at for 60 bucks rather than paying you 150 right? So what they were doing is they were devaluing their rates by throwing all these rooms on this cheap rate. And then all of a sudden they just figured out, oh my God, the customers have gotten smart. They know how to play Priceline. So now what we were doing is we were selling our rooms for 40 bucks instead of 150 bucks. So it it comes with that same mentality that you have to be very smart with what it is that you're doing. And just because there's another niche doesn't mean that you're going to throw them out there cheap to try to bring in more profitability. Lower rates don't always bring more customers. And when they do, it's at a less profit, which is where you don't want to be. And I'm sure Priceline didn't come flip the room and you still had all the expenses that went along with doing that. It, absolutely. But people used to say, oh, but they bring in tons of rooms. No, it's your same customers, but they got smart. They figured out how to use the system, right? Because there's only a certain amount of people coming to your hotel. It doesn't matter. Those people are going to come, whether they booked on Priceline, whether they book. And now you look at all the hotels and what do hotels now have? All the rate guarantee that their rate is going to be the best or they'll give you a $50 gift card or a $100 gift card. They figured out very quickly that what they were doing is they were sinking their profits is what they were doing, right? They got rid of the middleman. And we cut them all out. We cut them all out. And that same, the same thing happened to Expedia. You go to Expedia now and Expedia, all there is, is they're a travel agent. They get 10% commission off of the booking, just like any travel agent would do. So they can book your room. So their whole model changed once everybody figured out it's affecting those offering those lower rates is affecting our profitability. And the same thing is going to happen to you as a small business owner. Guys, let's do this. Let's take our final word from our sponsors. When we come back, Zach, John, I want to get your final thoughts. The Hyper Pole from Ultimate Pool Tools is a pool care pole designed by pool professionals for pool professionals, featuring precision crafted carbon fiber and stainless steel construction. Go to ultimatepooltools.com or Instagram at Ultimate Pool Tools. Pool pros have specific needs when it comes to general liability insurance. The SPPA program has you covered. With three tailored and customizable general liability options, SPPA makes it easy for pool pros to feel secure. Find out more and get covered at the SPPA.com. Now available, Pool Invoice. Pool Invoice is a pool billing software created specifically for the pool service and repair industry. It's developed for our industry and only our industry. Pool Invoice is built with reoccurring billing in mind. You can print, email, text invoices, or even send via WhatsApp. 
You can add reoccurring or yearly charges, accept credits, and set up auto pay. You can even see when customers have seen the invoice. It even has a customer portal where they can log in and see, print, and pay invoices. It has all your customers' information on one page, so you don't need to search through hundreds of invoices looking for the one you need. Just go to the customer profile and it's all at your fingertips. Created specifically for the pool industry, Pool Invoice. Now available at PoolInvoice.com. Blu-ray XL is the power of minerals working for you. Reduce your overall chemical costs and labor up to 50% guaranteed. Whether you have 20 accounts or 20,000, Blu-ray XL's direct pricing and free shipping to the pool trade have you covered. Improving pool professionals' profit and work-life balance is what they do. Blu-ray XL, the real mineral purifier. Visit them at BluRayXL.com. Blu-ray all day. Aquastar's new pipeline cartridge filters, available in two sizes, deliver top-notch hydraulic efficiency along with best-in-class filtration performance, approaching that of DE filters. Uniquely designed, open pleat spacing means 100% of the media square footage is usable. And these claims are backed by NSF test results. Designed with the pros' time and comfort in mind, the patented double-locking system improves safety and ease of access, making filter cleaners faster than ever before. Available now. Ask your supplier for pipeline filters today. Pivot how you clean pools. Debris that makes it to the bottom always enters from the surface. Clean from the top with Ariel, a smart solar-powered pool skimming robot. She works around the clock skimming pesky and fine debris off the pool surface. Tell your customers about Ariel and earn big commission on every sale. With advanced solutions like Ariel, you'll spend less time at the pools you service, improve customer relations, and increase your bottom line. Plus, pool owners will enjoy a constantly swim-ready and healthy pool and lower energy bills. Visit at pivotpoolproducts.com slash dealers to see how much you can earn and for resources on how to get your customers to ditch the net for good. Welcome back, everybody, to the Pool Nation Live podcast. We're talking to Mr. JJ Flawless, the fastest netter in the West, and Mr. Zach, the pool boy Nicholas, the famous pool boy. So while I was on break, big shout out over here to my boy Jay Brakefield from Brakefield Pools. I was showing him the poles from the ultimate poles. And then look at this beauty. So I'm going to practice a couple of poses. John, what do you think? Spare us, please. <laughs> there, there's something in it and I almost drank it. I'm ready. I'm ready for the awards. I'm ready to just kind of, the, the problem is I don't win any awards. <laughs> I can't win any. Yeah, we don't, I don't, we don't. So we have to give them away, right? What we're going to have to do is, because we don't get to pose with the pictures, whoever's on stage handing it off to somebody else, you or Zach, whoever that is, what we're going to do is I'm going to tell the photographer, I'm going to tell the photographer, hey, catch them. And then on each pose, you guys can do a different pose with a picture before the person comes up. That way you get pictures with all these awards, but check that out. Last year, remember the first one when it was like pool boy of the year and you were handing it off, you were like... They're trying to take it away from you and you're trying to keep it for yourself. You know what I mean? You're like, I won't do no. No. <laughs> it's mine. no, I don't want to give it up. <laughs> My precious. Yeah. And here's the beauty. So this is the trophy and this is pretty big, but as we do, we went bigger than this for this year. So the trophies this year are going to be bigger than this. They're going to be bigger than last year. Nice. So I'm super excited. I think we're on like thir day 36 countdown for the pool nation awards. And I am Super excited. Edgar sleeps with that trophy. Huh? Edgar sleeps with that trophy. No, actually, right now, I sleep with each one of the poles to each one of my sides. I put one in the middle of the bed to divide our bed. So I tell my wife, you stay on that side of the bed. From this marker over, this is my side. And then what I do is I put the other pole on the other side. So I sleep protected between the two Pool Nation poles in the middle of the night in my cage right there. Oh, my God. So, anyways. I believe it. 
Yes. So, anyways, Brian over here is going. Wow, two yeah. polls. Yeah, Brian, you're just jealous because you yeah. don't have in a poll bed. and you can't use a in poll, bed. my friend. Wow. He's just jealous. That's all. Brian, you're gonna you're gonna get one and take pictures of it. Buy one and take pictures, and then we'll talk about that. Hey, let's get some final thoughts here. Who wants to go first today? Okay. Okay. There we go. Do it. Keep with the tradition. There you go. Let's do it. All right. First thing is, I love. And we say it every time. I love these episodes that we do where we answer questions. It really gets my mind going, gets me thinking about things and helps me improve as well. And I made it through without falling on my face. So I'm very happy about that and say it went well. And the one thing that I'll leave everyone with today is take a moment to switch gears and take a break from rate. Everything is rate, 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 rate. Everyone's concerned about that. And good, you, you should be. But switch gears and look at your expenses and see if you have an opportunity to increase your profit percentage through lowering some of those expenses. It's a really good habit to get into and start making part of your routine. Because like John said, 1% of $10,000, it doesn't seem like a whole lot. But 1% of a million dollars is a significant amount of money to your bottom line. Go through that exercise, take a look at those things and get good at trimming those expenses. Man, John, he's just dropping gold. Every conversation today is like... He's on fire. I'm going to have to up my game. Look, I'll tell you, he actually, he's impacted me and he's making me change because I was going to do my final thoughts and make it nice and quick and little, but now I'm going to have to actually <laughs> put some thought into <laughs> the final thoughts, right? Come on, Zach. What's up, brother? Huh? <laughs> I was going to say this. I was like, look, I'm actually a little frustrated. I was frustrated with myself because I was looking at the questions that were being sent out today. And then I knew the questions that were sent out for Instagram live. And we never got past the second question on the Instagram live. And I was looking forward to talking about the the next question about goals. And here we are again on this podcast. And we ran out of time. And it's, it's my fault because I know I'm rambling on and I need to become more short and concise and with my answers because I really want to answer this damn question, this third question about goals. I did. You ruin the podcast if you do that. So we have to make time to answer this next question on the next podcast. I think we'll do it. And like Zach we'll said, start. yeah, we will start with this one because I think it's. We'll start the next podcast with this question. This is probably one of the most important questions, I personally think, because goals are very important for any business, for any human being period that wants to advance in life or do better for themselves and their family. And goals are very important, how you strategically plan them and set them and blah, 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 whatever. We'll get into it when we ask the question, but I think it's real important. But to tag on to what Zach was saying, he's 100%. And we talked about it on the Instagram live. Edgar, you brought this up too. And it's true is who gives it, who gives a crap how much, how many pools you have or what rate you're charging? I don't care. And it really doesn't matter at the end of the day. We look at companies that have 500,000 pools out here and I'm like, good for you, bro. But l let's put, let's look at that P and L and let's look at that profit percentage, right? And that dollar amount at the very at bottom. It. What's your number? Let's look at that number at the very bottom. And then it's going to start with a little eye opening when you start looking at it and you say, wow, the dude that has 150 pools or 125 pools is making as much as maybe some people that are, that have 500 pools out there. And look, those are the things that you have to look at. And that's what's important to be a smart businessman or woman. You need to be very aware of all the money going in and out. And you need to put very good planning into, you just can't, this is a, a saying I tell customers all the time because we are much more money than most companies out in the Valley. And they tell me a number and they go, or I tell them our number and they tell me and they're like, this is way so much. Is there any way you can work on it? And I let them know, I go, look, I don't just come up with a number out of thin air and throw it up against the wall and hope it sticks. And then let's work on from there where I'm not, this isn't a used car dealership, right? Where, or we're talking about, okay, the car's on sale for, or being sold for $50,000 and I'm going to go in there and offer them 30. And then hopefully we're going to meet somewhere in the middle. It's not a negotiation. So these, when it comes down to running your business successfully, understanding you're having business acumen and getting it right. And all aspects of your business and expenses, I think is, a, is one thing we tend to just neglect because we assume that it is what it is and that's just what it is and there's no changing it but in reality everything can be can be adjusted right or everything can be negotiated when it comes down to those types of things so 
I love these podcasts. I love talking about business, right? This is my thing. Zach, I think you nailed it, brother. We're, we, we decided on break without you, two to one vote, because I'm sure you would have voted against it, that moving forward, scripts are going to be <laughs> issued only at the morning of yeah the morning of or after midnight, midnight. Or after midnight or exactly so because we know he's sleeping yeah because we know after night that way or at eleven fifty nine p.m. the day before so we can say you had it the day before but this was good this was really good and really fun so thank you everybody for for tuning in today I apologize if I had some funny faces while I was talking or if I stopped mid thought it's because I had a jolt or a, a pain that ran through. <laughs> my leg and I, I swear, I swear I, on the first question, I moved my foot and I felt like lightning all the way up through my neck to my eye. And I was like twitching. I was in so much pain, but I'm yeah, going to, uh, I just, hopefully I can survive. I just, yeah, hopefully. So Shannon, big, huge shout out to you out here. Shannon is saying a squirrel, squirrel went off with off, off topic here with John's whining about the pain, <laughs> which by the way, Janie sent the number. And so I asked for, yep. And here's Michael sending a couple of pictures of violins into the Insta chats. Would you like some, some cheese with that wine, John? Dude, I need all the love I can get guys. I'm dying <laughs> over here. <laughs> Please. I mean, all the, the bus is running over I you. I need John. all the love like, from everybody boom, right boom, now. Boom. Cause I'm look, I need to get through today. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. It's going to look bad. Janie was calling me hip hop this morning. Hip hop. Cause I'm, Hipping and hopping. Walking down, yeah, walking down the hallway. Yeah. But two things. So one, she sent the number in, John. Do you want to hear what her number was? So I said from one to 10, 10 being the most that you hang on to and you can manage pain. And she sent it at a negative two. And uh, so just to give you a heads up. So she says that you are a complete crybaby and you can't, can't manage not even a headache. And the other thing, Shannon, big shout out to you. Are you going to Vegas, Shannon? Let us know. Send us a message. I don't know if you're going out to Vegas to the Pool Nation Awards. So anyways, John, Zach, I want to thank you for your time. Everybody, thanks for tuning in. We will catch everybody next week on Wednesday on our Instagram Live. Have a great one, guys. See, See you guys. Uh, by the way, before I press that button, Janet, uh, Shannon said that she's going to the Pool Nation Awards. <sighs> Another pool girl out there. Yes, Shannon. Big shout out to you. All right, guys. We will catch you guys next Wednesday on the Instagram Live. Have a great one. Thanks for listening to the Pool Nation podcast, a member of the Pool Nation family. You can listen to us live every Friday here at 9 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Central, and 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. You can find us at Pool Nation or PoolNationPodcast.com, on Facebook, or on Instagram at Pool.Nation. And to find more info about Pool Invoice, the billing software built specifically for the pool industry, go to PoolInvoice.com. Before you go, this is what the pool industry has been waiting for. PoolManUniversity.com. It's the first platform dedicated to learning the swimming pool service and repair industry. A pool service community where you can connect and find videos on business, service, water chemistry, and repairs. See you there at PoolManUniversity.com.